Hey, it's Kai here from Family Wheels with another car review for your growing family. And it's another mid-size sedan this week, the 2020 Nissan Altima. It's up against some massive competition like the Toyota Camry, like the Honda Accord. But there's something they put in this car starting in 2019 from Standard that gives it an enormous advantage over its closest competition. Before we find out what that is though, make sure you subscribe to the channel at the bottom right down here so you can catch all of our reviews as soon as they come out every single week. But let's go check out the 2020 Nissan Altima. And that massive advantage comes in the form of a three-letter badge on the back of the car, all-wheel drive. When Nissan did their big refresh and redesign of the Ultima for 2019, which by the way carries across to 2020 and definitely still holds up, they added all-wheel drive as standard in Canada. And that's a huge advantage. Oh, I drove the Mazda 6 just last week, and by comparison, this feels way more connected to the road, so much more traction, and it's going to be a huge advantage. Now the Accord doesn't have all-wheel drive, Mazda 6 doesn't have all-wheel drive, Toyota Camry is getting it but that's going to be in the spring of 2020. In Canada it is standard all-wheel drive on the Nissan Altima and the only other one to have that standard in its class is the Subaru Legacy. Now where the Camry may end up having an advantage and also its closest competitors is in the engine. So this has just one engine choice in Canada and there's only three trim levels as well which is way less than the others. The only engine choice is a 2.4 litre four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine putting out 182 horsepower which I've always gone ahead and said is underpowered. I'd also always use like something around about 225 horsepower. However, when you've added the all-wheel drive and the fact that this car, it doesn't invite you to really drive aggressively or to push it further. The Mazda 6 did. The Mazda 6 really asked you to give it more wonderfully handled car, and but the Ultima doesn't do it. So I'm going to completely contradict myself and say that 182 horsepower isn't too bad. It's actually got only 178 pound-feet of torque. Now, the difference is in the US, you do get the second engine choices, which every other car in its class pretty much has. The Accord, the Camry, the Mazda 6, they all give you a turbocharged option, which will take you to over to about 225 horsepower. And I don't understand why they haven't given us that option in Canada. Just, I know that they've given all-wheel drive a standard. Maybe they've gone, look, there's your all-wheel drive. The price point is bang on. It's like starts at $28,000. Top trim, this one, the Platinum, is $35,000 you know what we couldn't add in the extra engine choice just put it on a truck and send it just a little bit further north that would have been awesome transmission is a CVT which is often a very dirty word for a lot of people continuously variable transmission and I'm actually going to go and contradict myself again and say that I could probably live with this one as a comparison have a listen to how the CVT sounded in the Mitsubishi just a couple of weeks ago Okay, so I'm at a standing start. Have a listen to this CVT and tell me if it actually sounds a little bit better. So you actually do hear it change, change, as compared to some of those other ones that just really just sound awful. A couple of other things that is totally noticeable that you're not getting on the Ultima. You're not getting a sport shift. You're not getting any paddles. You really don't need it. You're not getting any other engine modes. It's, it's put it in drive or you got low here and that's it. Okay, big differences in this to the Mazda 6. This is noticeably bigger and more spacious on the interior. I actually said in the Mazda 6 review that you know what, you could probably live with that smaller compact size if you wanted something that performs better. I'll stand by that, but this interior has huge amount of space, like the leg room for the driver, the space, the passenger, our rear facing kid seat test with the world's biggest, most chunkiest kid seat, the Clec Flow. 
plenty of room. Look at when even the kids are facing forward. Look at the amount of leg room they've got there. An adult is way more comfortable in the back of this. Child seat anchors were nicely tucked away back there under those little padded covers so that they're not digging into a passenger's back if they are in there. It's got great uh, passenger head space in here as well. Sight lines are really good. You sit a little bit higher. And the trunk space in this one, the trunk space in this sits right between the Accord and the Camry. So cargo space on the Ultima, 436 litres or 15.4 cubic feet. So our standardised test of the stroller, two bags of groceries, camera bag, diaper bag, soccer ball, all taken care of, not a problem. What about pricing? In Canada, three trim levels. The S starts at $28,098 up to the Platinum. This one, which is $35,098. In the US, there's a few more because you can choose front wheel or all wheel drive on any trim level and you've got those turbo options. So it starts at $24,100 for the base and then the Platinum with turbo is $35,180. Interestingly, in the States, the turbo model only comes with front wheel drive. When I was looking on the Nissan website. Fuel economy is definitely a strong point as well. So combined, you are getting 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers, or which is about 36 miles per gallon. It's more on the 19 inch rims. So these are the 19 inch rims on the Platinum. So it's slightly more, and then a little bit more for the turbo option in the States as well. But fuel economy is still really good, and it's better than the Mazda 6, which we drove last week. The only thing is, um, when you're looking at the rim sizes, so I like these 19 inch rims, and they still provide a pretty comfortable ride. Um, the 16 inch rims come on the base model and they are with a bolt-on wheel cover cap. I mean, yuck. A lot of car makers these days will also give you some safety features from standard which usually includes like your blind spot warning and stuff and then you pay a little bit more for your forward collision warning and also emergency braking but that's flipped around on the Ultima so in Canada you get that as standard the forward collision warning and the emergency braking and then if you go to at least the second trim you're getting a few more of those options like your cross traffic and your blind spot monitoring. In the US they've actually made more uh, driver assistance technology available on the entry level S and the S SR models, which previously only had the standard forward collision warning and the automated uh, emergency braking, but the 2020 versions can actually be equipped with blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, and high beam assist as well. So more available to the driver from a lower trim level. Another cool piece of technology that Nissan have got, and it's available from the second trim level in Canada, is called Pro Pilot Assist. So when you're on the highway and you engage Pro Pilot Assist, the little button just here, the blue button on your steering wheel, what it will do is use the camera up here just above your rear vision mirror to scan for lane markers and when it finds them it will actually activate like your adaptive cruise control your steering assist and it can act on your behalf in bumper to bumper traffic so if you're someone who's on a highway and you've got a commute where you stop and go all the time you're going brake accelerator all the time um, what it will do is keep a safe distance or a desired distance from the car in front of you and just keep in your lane and move you without having to do it yourself so you can just relax a little bit more it won't work in a rainstorm which is for safety reasons obviously but also if you're somewhere where in winter you've got lots of grit and salt on the road and it's hard to detect those uh, those lane markers it's probably not going to work either and it will actually bring the car to a complete stop if it have to so if traffic's so bad you stop it can do that for you but if it does stop for more than three seconds you'll have to manually re-engage it it's called pro pilot assist and it's pretty handy if you're someone who's got a commute that's always on the highway and it's always backed up interior of the Ultima it does fall behind its competitors like this is the top of the line this is the platinum and while it looks nice it's definitely falling behind and using some cheaper materials for all its trims even around here on the infotainment system sort of doesn't look like it's very seamless at all you can see like the lines and the separation the pieces of plastic and stuff this wooden inlaid faux trim thing is a bit tacky. You do get heated front seats as standard though. You don't get things like a head-up display option. There's a bunch of things. Your tactile buttons on your climate control, while it does a good job and it totally works fine, it just not quite as refined and not quite finished as nicely as the highest trim level on its competitors. However, the closest highest trim level to this is the Mazda 6 Signature, which is 39 and a bit thousand dollars. So this is nearly $5,000 cheaper and about $7,000 cheaper than the highest trim level on the Accord um, and also the Camry. However, they also have the hybrid option, which we don't have in the Ultima. Infotainment system works okay. It's a eight inch screen, which is pretty standard along many car makers at the moment. It doesn't do a lot, but the screen resolution is pretty good. It actually sits quite forward and it's almost 
like it's too far forward, like it needs to be a little bit further backwards. But it's got all your connectivity you need. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all as standard. The resolution and the clarity on the reverse camera could be a lot better. Cabin noise is noticeably increased on the Ultima as well. I hate to continue to compare to the Mazda 6, but I drove that just last week. Cabin noise on that was exceptional, really low. You can definitely hear a lot more, but it still does give a pretty comfortable ride. But there just seem to be just a couple of things missing just to round it out as a top trim level. For example, like those rear passenger seats, the headrest is not adjustable. They're fixed in, they're sewn in. You can't move them. How long's it been since you saw a new car that didn't have on the top trim level uh, adjustable headrest for the passengers in the back? But the top trim level is just $35,000. It's a very practical car. I've actually grown to like it. And the all wheel drive gives it a massive advantage. And it's one that if you were looking at sort of like the mid range or two thirds up the trim level in its competitors versus the top trim of the Nissan Altima, you would definitely go and have a look at it purely based on the fact that it has all wheel drive. It's not gonna set your world on fire. It's not performance based, but it's very functional, especially for a young family. It's got plenty of room if you're tired of the boring old crossovers and compact SUVs. There's a lot of them. And and this could be more interesting. And the redesign still holds up, hey? I mean, I love the stance of it looking side on. It's got this nice angular stance to it. Safety rating is excellent on the Ultima as well. It gets a top safety pick from the IHHS. So that's the 2020 Nissan Altima. Hopefully you found this review useful. If you did, make sure you give it a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to Family Wheels so you can catch all of our reviews as soon as they come out every single week. Until next time from Family Wheels, I'm Kai.